Hi guys, hope you're all doing well today. Here it is Wednesday and we are going to continue and finish up the Junie B. Jones book. Um, we left off on chapter five, which is the fairy. Remember she had lost her tooth and so now we're waiting for the tooth fairy to come, I think. So let's see. Okay, so here we go. That night we had festivities. Festivities is when my grandpa and grandma come over and all of us eat cake. Grandma Helen Miller made the cake herself. She put a big smiley face on the top, only that is not all, because the smiley face had a tooth missing, just like me. I laughed and laughed at that silly thing. Then I reached in my pocket and I got my tooth and I passed it all around the table. Oh, that's a beaut, Junie B, said Grandpa Miller. I know it. I know it is a beaut, I said real proud. I can't wait to take it to school for show and tell. The children are going to love this thing. Daddy looked at me strange. Oh, gee, I, I don't know, honey, he said. I don't, I'm really, I'm not really sure you should take your tooth to school. Mother shook her head. No, Junie B, that's definitely not a good idea, she said. And besides, you won't even have your tooth on Monday. Remember, you have to leave it for the tooth fairy tonight. Just then my skin got chill bumps again and the flutterflies came back in my stomach because I know about the, I know stuff about the fairy, that's why. My voice felt kind of shaky. Yeah, only what if I don't want to leave my tooth for the fairy mother? What if I just want to take it to show and tell and that's all? Mother shook her head again. No, Junie B, no show and tell. Taking a tooth to show and tell is just, well, it's just disgusting, said Daddy. Yes, disgusting. I whined at those two. No, it isn't, I said. Lots of kids bring teeth to school. Because one time Roger brought a shark's tooth, and he even let me and Herb put it in right in our mouths, and then we look like sharks too. I thought some more. Plus, another time, Shirley brought her grandmother's dentures, and lots of us put those in our mouths too. Grandma Miller did a little gag, only I didn't. don't actually know why. My grandpa patted her hand. Just be glad she doesn't want to take the spit cup, he whispered. Just then my whole face lighted up, because I have ears like a hawk, of course. The spit cup, the spit cup, I will take the spit cup, I hollered. I jumped down from my chair and zoomed to the bathroom. Then I got the spit cup out of the trash, and I dusted it off real good. Good news, people, I shouted real loud. There's still some blood around the edges. I quick ran back to show them. Grandma Miller closed her eyes at the sight. Then mother put her head on the table and hid her face in her hands. The festivities were over, I believe. After grandma and grandpa Miller left, mother took me into the bathroom and we brushed my teeth real careful. Then I took my loose tooth out of my pocket and I brushed that guy too. I held it up to the light. Look, I said, look how shiny I made it. I really wish I could take it to school, mother. I really, really wish with all my might. Mother gave me a hug. I know you, Ju I know you do, Junie B but it's still going to be fun to put it under your pillow tonight, isn't it? She smiled. I remember when I was a little girl, I couldn't wait to wake up in the morning and find out how much money the tooth fairy had left me. My skin got prickly at that name again. Also, sweaty came on my head. I thought and thought about what to do. Finally, I stood on my tiptoes and I whispered in mother's ear, yeah, only I know stuff about the fairy mother. I know the truth. Mother looked shocked at me. The truth, she said. You know the truth? Yes, I whispered, I know the exact truth, Mother, because last year, Polly Allen Puffer told me the whole entire story. I took another big breath. Then I cupped my hands around her ear, and I talked even quieter. The tooth fairy isn't real. The tooth fairy is just pretend. Mother's eyes got big and wide at me. No, she said. Yes, I whispered back. Polly Allen learned it from his big brother. She's whispering to her mom. The tooth fairy isn't a fairy at all. She's actually a teensy little tooth witch. Mother's mouth came all wide open. A tooth witch? Shh, we have to talk soft, Mother. If the tooth witch hears anyone telling her secret, she flies into our room at night and she pinches our cheeks. Mother covered her face with her hands. She was in shock, I believe. Polly Allen's brother even saw the tooth witch because one night he put a tooth under the pillow and then he stayed awake all night. And then he saw the tooth witch fly into his room on a teensy little toothbrush. Oh my, said mother. I know it is, oh my, I said. 
And that isn't even the worst part because the tooth witch walked right under his pillow and she carried out his tooth. And then she chomped a big bite out of it like it was a little tooth pie. My mother made a noise behind her hands. I patted her very nice. I know how you feel. This is very hard to hear. Finally, mother took her hands away. But it doesn't really make sense, Junie B. I mean, why would a mean little witch leave money under a pillow? A witch would never do something that nice, would she? I rolled my eyes way up to the ceiling because sometimes I have to explain everything to that woman. Of course she would, mother. Don't you get it? The tooth witch leaves money so that children think she's really a fairy. Because if children don't think there's a fairy, they won't leave their teeth, right? And if they don't leave their teeth, the tooth witch won't get any tooth apples. My mother closed her eyes very tight. All of a sudden, she opened up the bathroom door and she ran right out of the room. She was taking it harder than I thought. Chapter six, full of soup. That night, Daddy tucked me into bed. He said that Polly Allen Puffer's brother is full of soup. There's no such thing as a tooth witch, Junie B. I promise you there isn't. Polly Allen Puffer's brother just made that up to scare Polly Allen. And then Polly Allen said it to scare you too. I shook my head. No, Daddy, no, it's not made up. I know it isn't because the tooth witch makes sense. That's why she wakes, makes way more sense than a fairy. Daddy raised his eyebrows. Why? Why does a fairy make more sense? Why does a witch make more sense than a fairy? Because, because the tooth witch likes to chomp the teeth, but the tooth fairy doesn't do anything with the teeth at all, right? And so why would she even pay money for them? Daddy made a little frown. Well, I don't know exactly, he said, but I'm sure that she must do something with the teeth, Junie B. There are other things to do with teeth besides just chomping them, you know. Like what, I asked. Daddy put his head in his hands, then he thought and thought. After he got done thinking, he went to get mother. She came into my room carrying Fussy Ollie. She handed him to Daddy and sat down on my bed. Daddy said, you have another problem about the tooth fairy, she said. I nodded. Yes, because if there's really a fairy, then she has to have a reason to want the teeth. Right, mother? There she is. There's Daddy with baby Ollie. She wouldn't just throw them in the garbage because that doesn't make any sense. Plus, also, it would hurt my feelings. Mother hugged me. Of course, Junie B, of course she doesn't throw them in the garbage. I'm sure the fairy does something very special with the teeth. Like what I said, Mother ran her tired fingers through her hair. So there's Mother running her fingers through her hair. She stood up and walked back and forth on my rug. Then all of a sudden, her face got brighter. I know, I bet the fairy uses the teeth to make jewelry. At first, Daddy and I didn't say any words. We just stared and stared at the woman. Jewelry, I said finally. Mother smiled. Yes, of course. She probably uses the teeth to make little tooth necklaces and bracelets and cute little toe rings. How does that sound? I made a sick face. It sounds repulsive, said Daddy. Mother stopped smiling. She quick took Ollie back from Daddy and she hurried out of my room. After she left, Daddy finished tucking me in bed. I'm sorry about that, Junie B. I'm afraid Ollie has your mother worn to a frazzle these days. I'm sure she's not right about the jewelry thing. He did a little shiver. No, certainly she's not, he said. Then, before I could ask any more questions about the fairy, he kissed me goodnight and he rushed out of my room as fast as mother. That night, I did not put my tooth under my pillow. Also, I did not put it under there the night after or the night after that because... What do you know? The tooth fairy still did not make sense. Chapter seven, a stumper. The next morning was school. I put my spit cup into my backpack and I took it to my bus stop because mother said I couldn't take my tooth, but the spit cup was grandpa's idea. I saved her a seat. Then I bounced up and down real excited because I couldn't wait for him to see me, of course. Finally, we got to his bus stop. I waved at him from the window, then ha, I leaned my face real close to the glass and I smiled my biggest smile. Herb's eyeballs popped out of his head. He ran onto the bus zippity quick. It came out, Herb, it came out, I said. My tooth came out on Friday. I smiled for him again. See, Herb, see how I look? I look fascinating, right? I don't look like Uncle Lou hardly. Tooth, Herb, Herb's eyeballs kept popping out at me. Whoa, he said, wow. 
I smiled at that nice comment. I smiled and pointed. See my tooth hole, Herb? Huh? I look cute, right? I don't even look like Uncle Lou, correct? Herb said, wow, again. After that, I quick got my backpack and then I unzipped the zipper. Yeah, only wait till you see this, Herbert. I, I brought something special for you. After that, I pulled out the cup and I put it right on his lap. Ta-da, it's my spit cup, Herb. I use that cup to rinse my actual spit. There she's showing him his spit cup. I showed him the edges. See the pink color right there? That pink is from the bleeding. Herbert's face did not look delighted. Okay, thank you. Please get it off me now. I got it off. But I thought you would like this, I said, very disappointed. Herbert patted me. Live and learn, he said. Pretty soon his face got normal again. How much money did you get from the fairy, Junie B? Did you get a lot of cash? My stomach did a flip-flop at the question because I didn't want to discuss that matter, of course. I squirmed in my seat, kind of worried. Then I looked out the window and I didn't talk. Herbert tapped on me. What's wrong, Junie B? How come you're not answering me? The fairy did come, right? She didn't forget you, did she? I looked all around. Then I scooted next to him very close and I quieted my voice to a whisper. Yeah, only I can't even discuss that matter, Herb, because I know stuff about the fairy. Stuff? What kind of stuff, he said. I whispered even softer. Sorry, but I have to keep it a secret. And so please don't ask me any more questions, and I mean it. After that, I pretended to lock my lips, and I threw away the key. I saw that on TV once. Herbert looked annoyed at me. I unlocked my lips again. Don't be mad at me, I said. I can't help what I know, Herb. And anyway, all you have to do is think about it, because the fairy doesn't make sense. Herbert scratched his head. What do you mean she doesn't make sense? Why doesn't she? I crossed my arms. Because what does the fairy do with the teeth, Herbert, huh? Did you ever ask yourself that question? Why would a fairy pay money for teeth that she doesn't even use? Sounds kind of fishy, don't you think? Herb just stared at me. Well, do you know the answer, Herb? A fairy wouldn't just throw teeth in the garbage, would she? Because that doesn't even add up. Only nobody knows what she does with them, apparently. Not even you, I bet. Herbert wrinkled his eyebrows. I never thought about it. He tapped on his chin. What does the fairy do with the teeth? Hmm, that's a stumper, all right. After that, he slid way down in his seat. And he thought and thought some more. I thought some more, too. We rode to school real quiet. Chapter eight, smiling. When we finally got to school, I started feeling shaky inside because I didn't want to get laughed at, remember? Plus, I was still concerned about the fruit throwing. I closed my mouth real tight and I walked back to my desk. Lenny smiled and waved at me. I waved back. Then very, very slow, I did a shy smile. That's when Lenny jumped up from his desk and he did a loud whoop. Cool, you look cool, Junie B. Jose heard Lenny and came to see. Then he grinned and grinned at his my brand new smile. Then he gave me a happy high five. And that's not even the best part because Mr. Scary saw what was going on and he came all the way to my desk to see my tooth. And he gave me a smiley face sticker. After that, he clapped his hands together and he made an announcement to room one. There is Junie B smiling her smile. He told them I lost my tooth and he asked me to stand up and show them my special new smile. I swallowed real nervous. Then I stood up kind of jittery and I opened my lips a teensy bit so the children could see my tooth hole. And what do you know? Room one was real happy for me. All of them smiled real nice. Except not May, of course. May just rolled her eyeballs. So there's May. I think you look weird, Junie Jones, she said. I think your smile looks silly. I sat down, no, May, this is a silly smile. Then I put my fingers in the sides of my mouth and I stretched my smile across my face and I wiggled my tongue at her very fast. Lenny and Jose laughed and laughed. And guess what? At lunchtime, I made my smile even funnier because Lenny gave me a raisin. I put it right in my tooth hole and it stuck there very hilarious. Shirley laughed her head off at that joke. I am beginning to enjoy that girl. So how much did the tooth fairy leave you, she asked. Did you get a bundle? Yes, yeah, said Lenny, I was wondering that too. 
I started feeling squirmy again. I looked at Herb kind of worried. He tried to explain the matter to them. Well, uh, Junie B didn't exactly leave her tooth for the fairy yet, he said. All the children looked at me. Why, they said. Why didn't you leave it, Junie B? I squirmed some more. Then finally I took a deep breath. I've got issues with that fairy. That's why I said kind of quiet. Issues, asked Lenny. Like, what kind of issues? I swall swallowed hard. Issues like, well, you know, like, what does she do with the teeth, for instance? For a minute, nobody said anything. Then May made the cuckoo sign at me. What does the fairy do with the teeth, she said? What kind of dumb issue is that? I flashed my angry eyes at that girl. Well, if it's so dumb, then you must know the answer, right, May, I said. So what does the tooth fairy do with the teeth, huh? She doesn't pay money just to throw them away, does she? After that, I waited and waited for her to answer. The other children waited too, but May didn't say anything. Well, I said. Well, said Shirley. Well, said Jose. Finally, May's face turned red, and she went to get a drink of water. After that, the whole lunch table started talking about the fairy. Only no one knew what she did with the teeth. We wondered and wondered. Then all of a sudden, Lucille stood up and she fluffed her fluffy dress. Well, guess what? I don't really care what the Tooth Fairy does with the teeth. All I care about is how much money she leaves. She looked at room one. You're nothing without money, people. Remember that, she said. I tapped my fingers on the table, kind of annoyed. Yeah, only that doesn't even answer my question, you, Lucille, because I still don't know what she does with the teeth. Lucille put her hands on her hips. Well, maybe she just collects them, she said. Did you ever think about that, huh? Collecting teeth is a hobby, you know. My rich Nana collects tons of junk, and she pays good money for it, too. I tapped my fingers some more. Then I put my chin in my hands, and I thought about Lucille's Nana. Finally, I started to smile a little bit, because maybe Lucille's idea might make sense, possibly. Pretty soon, Herb smiled a little bit, too. A tooth collection, huh? Hmm, maybe that's the answer, Junie B. Yeah, that might just be it. The fairy might collect teeth as a hobby or something. Sure, said Lenny. There's nothing wrong with collecting stuff. Like, I collect baseball cards. I don't really do anything with them. See, and I collect matchbox cars, said Jose. What's wrong with that? Just then, Sheldon springed up from the table. Yeah, and I collect vacuum cleaner bags. And the doctor says that's perfectly normal. After that, Sheldon laughed and he prepared to vacuum his pants. All of us moved away from him. Then the bell rang and everyone went out for recess. That afternoon, I wrote in my journal, Dear First Grade Journal, me and Herb talked some more on the playground. We decided that the Tooth Fairy has a tooth collection probably, and that is not even weird possibly. Also, I promised Herb I would put my tooth under my pillow tonight. I hope we are right about that. From Junie B, P.S. Wish me all the best. Chapter nine, miracles. That night, mother put me in bed. Daddy was in baby Allie's room. He was trying to rock that cranky baby to sleep. We heard Allie fussing. I bet you're glad it's not that bad, right, mother? That baby is a pain in our necks, right? Mother left. Oh, believe me, Junie B, you were no peach when you were teething either. She tickled me a little bit. Speaking of teeth, tonight's the big night, right? Tonight's the night you're finally leaving your tooth for the fairy? I covered my face with my sheet. Don't remind me, mother laughed again. Don't be silly, this is gonna be fun. She handed me my tooth to put under my pillow. I handed it right back to her. You do it, mother, you put it under my pillow, okay? And put it close to the edge, please, cause I don't want the fairy tromping around down there. Mother put it close to the edge. She let me check it. After that, she leaned down and she gave me a big hug. I'm very proud of you, Junie B. I'm pride, proud that you got over all that silly nonsense Polly Ellen Puffer told you. Thank you, I said. I'm proud of me, too. After that, Mother kissed me goodnight, and she turned out my light. I quick turned it on again. Yeah, only I think I will sleep with the light on tonight, I said. You know, just, just in case I have to come running out of my room in the middle of the night because there's a witch in here? Mother did a sigh. Whatever, she said. After that, she gave me another hug, and she closed my door. I jumped up and opened it again. Yeah, only I, I, I think I'll sleep with the door open tonight, I said. You know, just in case I start screaming my head off in the middle of the night because there's a witch in here. Mother said, I give up. I give up means the same as whatever, I believe. After that, she kissed me one more time and she left my room. 
The next morning I woke up very relieved because guess what? I made it through the night, that's what. I hugged myself real happy. Then all of a sudden I remembered about the fairy and my heart started to pound and pound because maybe there was money under my pillow. Right that very minute, I took a big breath. Then very careful, I reached under there and I felt around and bingo! My fingers touched something. I grabbed a hold of it and pulled it out. Then I sat up straight in bed and I laughed and laughed because good news, ha, cash. I zoomed to the kitchen and skipped around the table. Cash, cash, I got cash. I hollered real thrilled. Who wants to see it, huh? Who wants to see my cash? Please raise your hands. I looked all around the kitchen. Then I stopped skipping because no one was actually in there. I zoomed back down the hall. Mother, daddy, where are you? Where are you? The tooth fairy left me money. Mother stuck her head out, out of Ollie's room. We're in here, honey, she called. I skipped into Ollie's room and showed them my money. Look, people, I got cash, I got cash, I said. Only I don't know how much it adds up to, but it's a bundle, I bet. Daddy's eyes got big and wide at my money. Whoa, that tooth Mary must have been feeling very generous last night. I know, I love that fairy, Daddy. She left me money and she didn't even pinch my cheeks. Ollie was sitting in his crib. He smiled out of the bars at me. I looked surprised at him. What's wrong with Ollie, Mother? I asked. Why is he smiling? Is he sick or something? Mother laughed. No, silly. When I came in this morning, he was playing in his crib, happy as can be. I scratched my head. Really? Ollie? Happy? That's odd. Daddy picked him up. Well, actually, Ollie had a little surprise for us this morning, too, he said. He sat down with Ollie on the floor. Then, very gentle, he took his finger and he rubbed it against Ollie's gums. Hey, I said, it's rigidy. Daddy grinned. It sure is. That's Ollie's first tooth, Junie B. My whole mouth came open at the good news. A tooth, I said. Ollie got a tooth. I felt the ridges some more. Wowee, wow, wow. Last night was a good night for both of us, I said. Yes, it was, Daddy said. What a neat coincidence. Ollie got his first tooth the very same night the fairy came to get yours. Mother ruffled my, fit, my hair. It's almost like Ollie was waiting for the tooth fairy to come too, Junie B, just like you. I smiled at the thought of that. Then all of a sudden I stood real still and Goosebump came on my arms. She's feeling Ollie's teeth for the ridges. Wait a minute, I said real soft. What did you just say, Mother? Mother looked at me kind of strange. I said, it's almost like Ollie was waiting for the tooth fairy to come too. Just then I did a loud gasp. That's it, that's it, that's it. I springed way high in the air. Then I twirled all around and I hugged mother real tight. Ollie did wait for the fairy. He waited for the fairy just like me. Mother and daddy raised their eyebrows very curious. I skipped all around them in a circle. Don't you get it? The fairy recycled. She recycled my baby tooth and she gave it to Ollie. Whoop, whoop. Great idea. My feet started to dance. It's perfect, I said. It's just like Dan Dan the Soda Man can. The fairy took my tooth and she made it all shiny and new. And then she gave it to my very own baby brother. I bent down and felt Ollie's gum again. Yes, sirree, Bob. That's my tooth, all right. I'd know that tooth anywhere, I said. Daddy scratched his head. Well, I'll be, he said. Mother laughed. What a great idea. It is, Mother. It's a great idea. Plus, also, it's a big relief because the tooth fairy just doesn't th show throw teeth in the garbage. Now I know that for sure. I looked at my money again. It's just like Miss Chris told us, I said real squealy. Recycling makes sense. Get it? Mother, get it, Daddy? Sense sounds like sense. That's a good one, right? After that, I zoomed to my room to get dressed for school. I can't wait to tell the children. R room one is going to love this news. I put on my favorite pants and sweater. Then I ran quick back to Ollie and I felt his tooth some more. He smiled at me again. I smiled back at him. Cause what do you know? I think I li might like that boy after all. The end. Okay guys. So we finished Junie B. Jones. I hope you liked it. I hope you're having good days. I hope the sun is shining for you. And tomorrow we are going to start Mrs. Piggle Wiggle's Magic. So have a great day. 
Be nice to each other. Be nice to your brothers and sisters. Bye.